for illnesses that were unknown until one specialist discovered something that is almost too hard to believe. In a doctor's exclusive, this is Ann's story. My name is Ann. I started modeling around the age 15. I did some commercials. I did some print ads. I had one breast larger than the other, though. And when I was 20, I ended up getting breast implants. I loved them, but I had no idea of this nightmare that was coming. Within six months of getting the saline breast implants, I started getting these strange headaches. It felt like water was sitting on top of my brain. Then I started getting upper respiratory infection. My joints were starting to swell. My vision was starting to act up. At first, I thought she was crazy. Then she saw doctor after doctor after doctor, and nobody could figure out why she was going through this stage. I have liver pain. My stomach hurts all the time. My boob hurts. My left breast is bigger than the right again. Then I started getting cysts on my ovaries, and they ended up doing a complete hysterectomy on me. And then my voice just went. She couldn't talk. She'd write down whatever she wanted to say. To see her go from 100% to laying flat on her back, just miserable. And it's just heart heartbreaking. I was hugging my children and loving on them as much as I could, because I really thought I wouldn't be here anymore. When I woke up to do my self-exam, I couldn't find my implant. I go to my mammogram and she says, I can confirm it's ruptured. I had mold on the inside of my implants as well as the outside, including some of my breast tissue. Mold dumped into my body when the implant ruptured, going throughout my entire system. This had to be what was wrong with me because if it wasn't, I was going to die. In a doctor's exclusive, Anne joins us now. Welcome, I know you've been through a lot to be up here on stage when this all happened and you figured out what was going on or seemed to be going on was it really hard to believe once i found out it was mold growing in my breast implants it was it was um a nightmare it was that's gross that's that explains why when i sweat i stink and why i'm sitting there throwing clothes away because i can't get the nasty smell out of them how do you feel now how do i feel now I still have a lot of pain, uh, nerve pains. I still have numb fingers. Breasts, um, mostly in my upper back, it just goes right into my brain. My hands and feet are still numb. I um, have joint pains in my hip, my lower spine, and um, I have vein issues and breathing issues. And when were they removed? Uh, two years ago, October 31st. So, and I mean, we, Drew, I have a We question. have these implants. This is one side, this is the other side. Now, I have never seen mold grow like this on the exterior of an implant. Now, you have to understand that once the mold is there, it's, it's going to continue to stay there in this case. I have seen this where you get contamination sure. of, of saline. We fill these in surgery. There's a valve system. You can get contamination into that sterile saline and mold will grow and obviously there was some sort of contamination i'm guessing in in the process of doing it it's it's interesting when you talk about mold we often talk about mold being this hidden health danger in our homes it's behind your drywall you right, don't right. see it you never think well it's right behind your breast tissue so this is a such a unique story quite frankly one i had never heard of it sounds really shocking to a lot of folks but dr susan kolb specialist and author of the naked truth about breast implants says so she sees us quite a bit and she joins us now on skype so dr cole this is something that you have really come to specialize in treating women who, who have this problem so you say you're seeing this quite a bit is that true that's true dr travis um i have uh, a number of patients that have problems getting rid of the biotoxin. In fact, 25% of the population can't get rid of the biotoxin with mold. So even if you have a little bit of contamination of mold, they can get very, very sick with a neurological and fibromyalgia type illness, even if the implant is not black. And I have in fact seen hundreds, if not thousands of patients ill because of this biotoxin problem with saline I mean, implants. I mean, Dr. Cole, are you now totally anti-implant? Is that what you're saying? No, not at all. Um, I'm not anti-implant, but I think we need to do more to educate both the patients as well as the doctors, and not just the plastic surgeons, 
they often go to the emergency room and the ER doctors have no clue what's going well, on either. Well, Dr. Cole, so we have to educate all of the doctors about biotoxin illness in patients with breast implants. Well, I couldn't agree with you more that as plastic surgeons, we have to be doctors first. And if a patient comes in after augmentation and has any change in symptoms or the breast appear different, then it's our obligation to work that up and if necessary, remove it and, and investigate. And Dr. Kolb, you shared with our producers um, before this segment that you yourself have implants, correct? That's correct. And can, can I ask, are they saline or silicone? Currently, I have saline implants that ne probably will need to be changed out every 10 to 15 years in order to be safe. Dr. Kolb, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and experiences with us. We really quickly. Because the symptoms are so nonspecific as they were in you, in you mean, no one's sitting there putting a unifying diagnosis together thinking, oh, this is obvious. You know, I potentially have mold in my breast implants. How, how would you even go about working this up? Or as um, Dr. Cole eloquently pointed out, a lot of times you might show up in the ER. Here I am an ER doctor. You have all these nonspecific symptoms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through the history you find out, okay, well, breast implants have been there for decades and decades and there's some soreness there because it's not like you just you know cut open the skin and, and look and well, say yep there well, you know well, it, it seems like there were some abnormalities that they found on a mammogram so that right there in itself is boom it's time to go in there operate investigate something is not right yeah. you may have a normal mammogram though that makes it more difficult to decide what you want to do but nowadays I think with, with, with stories like Anne, that if, with these symptoms, with an implant that's been in there for years and years, you're best served to say, you know what, it's time to swap these implants out. This may be, and you know, we'll never, never know if in fact these implants were the cause of, of your symptoms. I mean, the proof of the pudding, you should get better if all of this is el eliminated from your body, or is it just that that you are reacting in a certain way to this infection. And obviously the, the one thing we didn't want to do today is, is scare everyone. You raised some really valid points. We also have joining us um, in our audience, Paula. There are um, people out there who've obviously dealt with this. There's a group called the Implant Truth Survivors Committee. And, and Paula, I know you just wanted to really give a shout out to those women out there who maybe have dealt with something like this. Exactly. Like Ann, I went through the same, I had the same symptoms. I had my breast implants put in in 92 and revised under the muscle in 1994. And uh, probably two years after that, I started getting chronic sinusitis. I never really thought anything about it. And then in the year 2000, I started getting sores all over my body. And you can see the scars that I'm left with. And uh, they got so bad they were in my scalp and on my back and everywhere. And uh, then in 2008, I got severely ill. And uh, I mean, I knew so I was So you had your die. implants removed, right? Right. And did, did you get better subsequently? Yes, I still have the neurological, mm -hmm. cognitive issues, um, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, things of that nature. I still deal with that. And, and I think the most important takeaway um, as Dr. Warden alluded to earlier, is he's put in thousands of these. They're done under sterile technique, and in most cases, everything goes fabulously. But there are instances, and it's not just mold growing on your breast implant. It can be other problems and issues. So if you're concerned, it's always best to get it checked out. Uh, I want to applaud the two of you for joining us and, and sharing your story to enlighten folks out there. If you want more information, um, as well as links to to their committee. We're going to have that on our website, thedoctorstv.com. We'll be right back. Coming up 